Welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast, where we discuss an eclectic range of topics, including business, design, Texas culture, and everything in between. We're two teachers that turned a side hustle into a nationally known apparel brand, and now we work with some of the biggest names in Texas. We strive to never stop exploring and continue to draw inspiration from our adventures. So drift and explore or raise a glass. We're always ready to hang out and talk about the things that we love. So come roll with us as we drift and explore. Welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast. I am Brian Weisong, and today I have a very good friend of mine, Justin Miller. What's up, man? Nothing much. Just happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. For sure. So if you don't mind, like I told you a moment ago, I always butcher intros, <laughs> uh, even though I know you and all that. I know I will butcher your company and what you do. So do you mind sharing who are you, what do you do? Sure. And why the heck are you here with us today? That's a great I'm still trying to figure that out. And I yeah. kind of want to see the butcher side of that, too. <laughs> but, yeah, my name's uh, Justin Miller. I work for a company called Slalom. They're a consulting firm. Um, I've been with them, man, since 2020, right before the pandemic hit. But I focus on user experience, so designing anything from mobile apps, websites. I do branding, logos, all that kind of fun stuff. But my main focus is, at the end of the day, understanding the user needs for whatever company it may be and also understanding the business needs and kind of meshing those things together and so i've been doing that for consulting side for about 11 years did i worked at a design firm before that so probably a total about 16 years of just design experience that's awesome and trying to be creative and cool L- a little different so as you know jeb uh, he's our lead artist and creative director my wife is you know one of our artists as well and we've never dabbled in user experience mm-hmm. it's always been talking about the creative process yep. and how how do they get inspired uh, so what exactly is user experience exactly yeah so it's really focused more i could sounds the user's experience and whatever it may be and so i've done a lot of on the side like graphic design and logos and branding which can still involve the user how they perceive a logo or the brand and so on but for me on the user experience side, especially at Slalom, is we really want to talk to users. So we do interviews, we do like stakeholder interviews from the, the client side too. And so just gathering that information, we also will look at like say Google Analytics, look at data to really back up des- design decisions down the road as well. So it's really looking at those things, uh, qualitative and quantitative you know, data yeah. to really kind of back up the design, which has been super helpful. I learned as a young designer where before, you design some, say, masterpiece, but then the client may not, may not like the color red. Well, that's a part of your brand. we got to use it. So now, and what I've learned over the last, I've been using data more and more, but probably the last eight years, is backing up the decision making with that kind of data where, sure. say, someone wants to have an, a, a navigation on a, on a website. Hey, I want to have 30 different ways to get around. Well, today you can show with Google Analytics or other things where data to prove that, hey, only you know 5% of people are going to these different areas. You really, you want to focus on this piece. So it's really just leveraging that data and then user information from those interviews and also just talking to the stakeholders at the, the company as well. Very cool. It's uh, a lot of times I, I've used this analogy before, but our artists create out of the inspiration of their heart. Yeah designers to me create out of the strategic purpose of what they're trying to accomplish mm-hmm. uh, and to me I think the user experience uh, concept is a missed element for many designers because they are typically designed to what they like rather than what's most strategic to mm-hmm. the consumer I remember when you and I first met well we didn't first meet but the first time we sat down uh, it was at the top uh, Best Thai uh, sushi or oh yeah actually somewhere on, on Main Street here yeah, yeah. So was, I don't know it's Thai food yeah and I remember you started sharing exactly what you did and I thought it was awesome because I've never heard I, I didn't know about your company I didn't yeah. know what you did and that stuff fires me up because I love the strategic side of marketing right yeah um, so with you uh, not I know you can't share a company name mm-hmm. I know that but is there maybe an experience that uh, that process you went through of that user experience that helped a company go from good to great or 
mm-hmm. much better than where you know where they were before you got your hands on that business. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple that I've done, and it's more in the e-commerce space. And I always love e-commerce because at the end of the day, it's a simple kind of sol- uh, solution or problem to solve is just getting someone to the site and getting through the checkout flow. Right. So it's that same flow, but it's how to get them through it. And maybe there's moments of delight where like, oh, that's pretty cool. This animation comes in, whatever it may be. Um, but there was a client that we did work with. Um, this is before Slalom, another company I worked for. And... Um, we did like A/B testing, so we would see, okay, here's one route that a client or the a user would go, and here's another route they would go, and then we would test to see which one was more successful. And I forget the number, but we made them millions more just because of tweaking throughout. And then you know we follow like a, a sprint cadence, so we're always iterating, and so we do two week sprints where. I'm working alongside developers, showing designs, and then showing how we've iterated from the last, you know, sprint. Um, and then what we'll do, so like I said, we'll do user interviews in the beginning, understanding the business side of things, but also throughout the designs, we may develop prototypes for the design so we can test that with users so they can say, oh, yeah, you did listen to us. Like, no, nope, that's not what we wanted. And so we can tweak it, but you're always kind of changing it. So it's never really done. It's just always iterating to make it better and better. And so with this said client on the e-commerce side, it was just it was pretty neat to see where, we, you know, we made a client you know, a lot more money, uh, but just the users are a lot happier too. And, and it showed the power of utilizing data and understanding the user needs to make a better experience. Because for me, I'm always trying to be extremely empathetic. Like, like, yeah. To your point, like, I learned like, oh, I want to design this thing. This thing looks really cool and sweet. But like, if it doesn't solve the problem that the users, you know, are trying to solve, um, it's not going to, they're not going to want to use it. They don't care right. how pretty this thing is. They want to be able to get from A to B or whatever it is. No doubt. And so that's what I learned where I still, you can still make things look beautiful, but you need to bring in that data piece too to understand how to kind of turn different levers or tweak it to make a, a, a memorable experience where they'll come back more. No doubt. So, man, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> End scene drop mic. Are we done? Boom, okay. Done. That's it. <laughs> well, so n- knowing a little bit more about that and, and what you are doing now, let's backtrack to your past. Yeah. Because I see you're, you're sporting that Texas country T-shirt of ours. Oh, yeah. You know, but you're not a Texas boy. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? And like, yep. I guess what, kind of with your background, what even inspired you to get into the creative space or have a love and passion for art? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'm I'm from Pennsylvania. If you can't t- tell from my accent and whatever it is, I've lived in a bunch uh, multiple different states. But um, grew up in Pennsylvania. Went to college up in Pennsylvania, Bloomsburg University. Go Huskies. Um, <laughs> tiny school was actually by Scranton. If you, uh, anybody follows the office, but um, you're from Pittsburgh, right? No, I'm from uh, Hanover. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, what is it? Snyder's Pretzels of Hanover. So everybody lo- loves Snyder's Pretzels. But uh, but yeah, so I went to school up there. I lived in Baltimore for about a year after school, moved to North Carolina for two and a half years, and then came to Texas about 12 years ago, and then met my wife, Ashley, two weeks later uh, when I moved here, even though my mother told me not to meet anybody because she knew I would never move back to Pennsylvania, and I lasted two weeks. Right. And so, but yeah, since I was a kid, super young, I always got into, I loved art. And I remember I won an art award when I was in the third grade or something like that. And then there's another girl that came in, super talented, and she does great work now. Uh, but then she beat me in the fourth or fifth grade, and I got upset. But I learned also I'm competitive. But it was always been around. I took art classes in uh, high school. And then in college, I was undeclared for like two years. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like, oh, maybe I'll go and be an architect because I loved Legos and building things. I love being creative. But like, well, I'm awful at math, so maybe architecture right. isn't where I should go. Definitely wouldn't want to be in that building. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thing I didn't go that way. Um, but at the end of the day, so I, I think I was like, I'm going to major in marketing and I'll minor in art studio, so traditional art. And then I did that for about a month. And I was like, why am I taking, you know, accounting classes or this stuff, you know, for marketing? Because I, I value marketing, but I just, my passion wasn't there. So I told my advisor, hey, I want to get into, I want to be an art major. And she's like, well, you're going to be a starving artist. Like, how good are you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you you're going to be successful. And to me at the time, it's like, you know what? I just want to follow my gut. I prayed on it. This is what I felt God wanted me to go. This is my kind of calling. So I did it, and luckily I got into graphic design that way because I was like an art director of a school magazine for a couple years, just kind of jumped in. I, t- I took one Photoshop class because this is back, like, they really have 
graphic design classes. So I took one class in uh, Photoshop, but then I learned you know, at this magazine. And then I worked for a TV station too, at the graphics behind the anchor. I was doing that kind of stuff. So, but I learned, I loved it because with painting or like drawing, like you make a mistake, you got to paint over it and start over where graphic design, you hit command Z and you just start over that way. You know, you don't have to redo everything. So that's kind of what got me into it. And then really throughout my career is just learning on my own, um, learning from others that were better than me, kind of being, I always tell young professionals, just be like a sponge and just suck up that knowledge. Um, that's how you can grow so much faster. So It's crazy because my wife, Hillary, was also a, and I don't know the correct terminology, <laughs> you know, like for me, I was a business administration major with a focus okay. on marketing. I'm not sure what the graphic design major was, <laughs> but whatever it was uh, at Texas Tech, she went there because there was, this was a, what, in 2000 and three. Okay. I mean, there was only two schools in Texas, uh, in the state of Texas that had a gr- specific graphic design major. Yeah. It's crazy that fast forward today, I bet every university has that. Yeah. You it's, know? Yeah. It's crazy because at the time, yeah, because it was around the same timeline for me and I'm sure there's other, you know, schools that had it, but like, do I want to leave the school? Do, am I sure I really want to do this? There's already a risk going down that path, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to, because the great thing, because I got my bachelor's in art studio, so it's more on drawing, painting, 3D design, but not 3D Pixar, actual like sculpting. Yeah. But the cool thing about that is I could take that experience and mesh it into the digital space too. Right. And so, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And that's what I tell designers today they have a head start because if they are going to school for that, then they have that knowledge. Where for me, I worked for a government contractor in North Carolina. It was about 40 designers, and there were certain ones that were really good, and I just latched onto them. And so I would work, you know, nights and just make my own dentist website. And there was no dentist, I just made it up, but I wanted to practice my skills. Like, how can I? And this is back in, with Flash and stuff like that. Right. But I really had to learn. Like read books, learn online, all that kind of stuff. Where now, yeah, there are a lot more opportunities for it, for sure. Now, with with that background, let's fast forward to your time in Frisco. Um, I want to say there's a little story about you playing a sport. Uh, was it like a football? I believe. Oh yeah. What, it what, was, what was that experience? Yeah. <laughs> so me and my buddy Sean at the time, we we tried out for a team. It was like the Louisville Savage. It was a it's they call it semi pro i don't i don't know maybe less more semi less pro <laughs> but uh but we i mean we tried out it was funny we had to do a 40 and all that kind of stuff and for the for about 5 minutes i had the fastest 40 time and then someone else came and beat me so i was pretty you, proud you of look, that you look pretty quick yeah i, tr- I ran a f- Four six, I think it was. Oh, that's so, no, horrible. Yeah, no, I got benched. No, but so I, with it was a cool experience. Um, I played like every position because we, you know trying to find guys to play and stuff like that. And I think once a year they would have a guy go up to the NFL and play. I don't know how much they played in the NFL, but that was it. So it was to that level. Um, I'm glad I did it, but the one time my hand got smashed in between like two helmets, I couldn't feel it for the entire first half. I was like, I think I broke it. Luckily, I got feeling back. I was like, you know what? I need to do my job <laughs> if I don't yeah. have my right hand. That's, that's when they put you a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one I showed up to a game and the quarterback was hurt or something like that. And they said, hey, you're going to start a quarterback. I've never played quarterback in my life other than backyard football. So I've never taken a snap before. <laughs> and we're going up against the team that's been undefeated for two years where they had last year a guy went up to the NFL from that team. So I'll, yeah. I maybe I think I was like three for thirteen, and no lie, every snap I would catch it and just kind of just toss that thing like Uncle Rico trying to catch, you know <laughs> find somebody across out there. My buddy Sean was running. I was like, Sean, just get ready. As soon as they snap it, I'm just gonna lob it up. But <laughs> so it was a fun experience. It re- reminded me of I loved football because of the camaraderie between your teammates because you're you know beating the crap out of each other, but there's that brotherhood too. So that was that was cool. I keep up with some of those, those guys still. Yeah. So it was a fun experience. Now coming back to that Texas country shirt. Uh, and now that people have heard, you're not necessarily a Texas boy, yeah. but you've obviously embraced something from here because you're wearing the shirt. Yeah. Um, what, or, and I know the answer to this, but I'll let you speak to it, but you've designed a logo for a, in a, an up and coming musician from Frisco, yeah. who's very much a, a very strong um, in the Texas music scene and the mm-hmm. Nashville country scene as well. Talk, talk about Grace and yep. who she is and what you've been able to do for her. Yeah, so Grace Tyler, 
good friend of ours, really good friends with uh, the family. They're awesome, awesome people. Um, yeah, we met Grace and her family. I think Ashley, my wife, was doing the she battled the legends, you know, a kind of like American Idol type you know, competition, and Grace was on it. And she yeah. won it, and I think she was super young. Sorry, Grace, I don't remember how old you were, but I remember seeing hey, this little tiny little girl and her <laughs> voice. And I still like there's songs that she does today. It's just it's so neat to see her progression throughout her career, and I still get I get chills now. Yeah, just to see what she's done, and I still just imp- like there's t- I, I get I I'll tear up with some of her songs are just so so good in her voice. And it could yeah. be the you know. A national anthem, which you know you hear all the time, but the way she sings it is just amazing. And so I was lucky enough to do some work for her over the years. I did like a logo. I got to do a T-shirt. Worked with, a little bit with you on. Yeah. And so it's just fun to do that and see her. You know, and when she's in town, when she's not, you know, in Nashville. So it's been great just uh, seeing how she's grown over the years, and then just our bond with the, the, her and the family over the years has been great too. So Je- Jeb's the artist, and he loves other aspiring artists. But for me, being the marketing business guy, I was like, why are we printing a shirt <laughs> from a design <laughs> from some other dude? Yeah. It's been pretty cool to get to know you. I'm like, okay, this is, we, we can do this now yeah, for you. Yeah, it's okay now, yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's, you know, it's, I want to say it's your logo on a shirt's one thing, but is it the same, that logo on the drum? So, yeah, so I forgot because I did, an, I guess, a couple variations. And I think maybe the logo you guys did as well. Okay. I think Jeb did, uh, she used. But there was one on the, I have a picture of it somewhere. Because it was cool to see it on stage, that. But honestly, seeing the T-shirt and seeing people wear it. And it was not, like, they used the logo I did on the drum, I think, on a T-shirt as well. Yeah. So to go to one of her concerts and see that, that's pretty neat. Like, when I see my work, because, like, a lot of my stuff's digital. So it's on a website, which is great. There's some big companies I got to work with, which is is neat, but when you see it on like printed, it's just a different type of experience, yeah. I guess. And so it was really neat to see it on, especially on the t-shirts. And I was like telling everybody, hey, you should buy that shirt, yeah. just total strangers. So how does that feel as an artist getting, I mean, it's one thing when you work for a company and you see your stuff out there in the mm-hmm. wild, uh, probably by big corporations that you can't say who they are, yeah. right? But how does it feel when you, you as an entrepreneur and a true artist, not designer, uh, was able t- to design something for a musician, and you see it out there yeah. on a shirt or on a drum, on a video, on you know, obviously social media. What's that feel like? I mean, it's pretty awesome. I mean, there's a mixed feeling too, like, oh, wow, that's really cool to see this. Man, I hope they sell these T-shirts yeah. too. <laughs> they yeah. don't sell. Do they do good work? You know, I'm always. I think designers you always do that. Always kind of question things or anytime, especially printed. You yeah. just look at it. Oh, I would have done this different and that because that's the nice thing with digital. You can go back and make changes with print. Once it's done, it is done until you you know another batch later. Yeah. So um, that experience is pretty. Uh, it's a lot of fun, especially that because it's unique. Because I don't I don't do it that much, and so when I do do it, and then too, I don't really sketch. Um, I have s- sketched out kind of design, so that one was all hand drawn. I don't do that as much. I know that's Jeb does it. Hillary, uh, Hillary does it all the time, but for me, that was unique. Where someone like Grace. They asked me to do this. Like, well, I think I can do this. I don't really. I haven't really drawn in about you know five years, <laughs> yeah. um, other than sketching on a whiteboard and stuff. So that was the other part too, where I was kind of nervous about. But at the end of the day, I was proud of what we came up with. She was super happy with it, and then to see it there, it was neat just to kind of see it all kind of come together, and then see it at one of her concerts. That's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. I dragged you along to two different Texas country uh, concerts over the last two years. Um, Yes. Uh, my birthday last year, it was Aaron Watson at the Rustic. Yep. And then this year, it was Cleto with yeah. Zane Williams and McKinney. Yep. Uh, what, 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 that's, to me, one of the best experiences I've ever had in the sense of music was mm-hmm. seeing Cleto and um, Zane because it was so intimate. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of that experience. What, what was that experience like for you, sitting there, listening to that music, seeing a guy that your wife is uh, admires? And, yes. Yeah. What was that like? That was really cool because, yeah, because I never really listened to country. Now, Ashley has got me into country more and more, but I love, especially Flatland Calvary, listen to it's more of that kind of folky uh, sound to it. And to be in that more int- intimate experience with those two, that atmosphere, it was probably one of the best music experiences I've ever been to because I wouldn't yeah. really call it a concert because it was just so intimate and smaller. Um, 
But and then too, just to get to talk to them later or afterwards, it was just really surreal and fun. And then seeing Ashley kind of geek out <laughs> over yeah. them, dude, like <laughs> hugging you know, Cleto, and like he's like, "Who's this?" Like, "Oh no, we're best friends. I have all your yeah. albums." And because like I've gotten into vinyl, um, especially over COVID, like, "Oh, I'm gonna try this now." Like everybody else, getting more pets and stuff. And I got one of their albums or vinyls, and so I still listen to it all the time. So that experience was neat, and I have more of appreciation for you know Texas country music too. Well, I thought it was fun because I'm probably a lot like Ashley. I'm like, okay, if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna make sure it happens. And I just remember texting, "Come now!" <laughs> and so y'all y'all came running, and I got yeah. y'all backstage. Oh yeah, uh, that was. And people were lined up waiting to get pictures with him and. Everyone's waiting on us to actually get her hug, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but she I thought that was cool. about it. And yeah. he, he 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 remembers that, you know. He I think he is all the people he probably meets every day at every event. I think it's pretty cool um, because after that he reached back out about that night. Oh yeah, like, how are y'all doing? That's pretty Kinda, awesome. You know, um, my dream and bucket list is even though I'm not the artist, is that we can design a shirt for Flatland. Yeah, that'll be awesome. That, oh, yeah. that will happen in the next couple of years. Yeah, and so. I think their style, at least I've seen on, I forget which album it is I have in the vinyl, but definitely would fit with your guys' brand or what you've done in the past. Yeah, so I would sure. think that would be an awesome relationship. But shout out to, I believe it's L.Y. Uh, Barbecue. It's, oh, yeah. So the L.Y., they got, you got local Yokel and McKinney. Oh, yeah. Then they have L.Y. Outfitters, but then they now have a restaurant in downtown McKinney. Um, they do, I think, once a month with uh, – uh, the the uh, the restaurant and Zane Williams they put on a concert every month. Mm-hmm. It's like an intimate setting. It's about oh, yeah. 120, 150 people, chairs, open bar. Yeah. Um, so anyway, shout out to them because I think it's one of the coolest experiences because you're so close to the stage. Oh yeah, it was a great experience. Now, one thing I always like asking people is, how did we meet in the first place, or Good how question. did you ever like come to know about Tumbleweed Textiles, uh, the company? Yeah, I'm trying to, I don't remember how we met. Do you remember right. how we met? <laughs> right. uh, I'm a jerk. Yeah. Well, maybe it's through Ashley. I'm just yeah. probably something. I don't know if it's like a networking event or something yeah. like that. And maybe she was with the Legends then too. Yeah. Um, but no, I remember her talking about tumbleweed. And yeah, because I have a screen printer at home. These douchebags. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be around these guys. Uh, I can do better work. No. Um, yeah, because like every I, I talk about yeah UX side digital print but like i even like to create things from lamps to bookshelves like anything creative and so i love just seeing especially what jeb and hillary does or jeb did the thing for the pga the the mixer yeah, yeah. stuff like that because like i'm not an illustrator i can't do that like people think oh you're a designer oh you can do interior design you can do this like right. no there's certain things that i can get it you know maybe halfway there and stuff but i remember seeing the designs i think i was telling you i had the one it's the texas state of texas with the basketball mm-hmm. and, and i just love the simplicity of the designs um and so i was like yeah i want to meet these guys and then you know, we hit it off there you go now we're, now we're actually in a uh a life group at our church yep. at hope fellowship uh and it's actually crazy because i i think now i just realized you uh, and Asha, the first two spouses we've had, both of you on this podcast oh, at okay. some point. There you go. So yeah, so Did I we mean, get a prize. Or she something? she, she made such a good impression that we decided <laughs> to bring the better half. You know, yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah. usually it's Ashley leading these things, or I said I'm in the background just holding her purse. You know, yeah, saying no eye contact, but you know. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to be here, man. So looking at um, now getting back on track with design and business and marketing, what has been you know, you kind of mentioned some obstacles, like as a football, when you were thrown under the fire as the quarterback <laughs> and you got your hand smashed, you're like, and you probably decide, I'm done with this. Yeah. Um, what are some similar maybe obstacles that you've been in as a designer or creative where you kind of were thrown into the fire mm-hmm. and kind of your, you know, you, you just had to figure out a way to make it? Is, yep. is there any kind of like hardship experience that yeah. you went through? Yeah, I, I think too, especially in consulting, I think that's why I love and hate it is, and why I've I thought about going, say, in-house, you know, being a creative director or head of design or something like that. But I think for me, with my ADD, I like just jumping from different industries where it could be, say, e-commerce, it could be pharmaceutical, um, and just learning about all these different industries. Because I've probably worked in seven different industries now, but like seeing where I can pick something and say I did, I'll name drop like i did work for chuck e cheese 
but I can still pull something from Chuck E. Cheese for, you would never guess, like some pharmaceutical company. Because right. there's certain like, business needs and so on that it just makes sense to kind of tie those things for together. Sure. Um, and I think with consulting, yeah, you're working in different industries, client's always different. You're going to always have, it's a red flag with this person over here. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that relationship. Your slalom team or internal team is always going to be different. So it's all these moving parts. And so almost on a daily basis, you're like, how am I going to get through today? What am I doing today? And what are we working on? And um, But I think that's how it's helped me grow. And for myself, and we were talking about this earlier, is where I think if it's the day-to-day stuff, career stuff, I've always said, you know, follow your gut and pray on it. Uh, and that's what's helped me. No, I've made plenty of mistakes. For sure. But I'd rather do that than follow something that like money where if I do make a mistake, at least I'm falling back on something where I really was authentic and thought, you know what, this is what God's calling me to do. Okay, maybe we hit a, a wall or something like that, but at least I, f- I can fall back on that yeah. rather than I was trying to be selfish. Oh, I want to make more money, and then you know nothing's there. Then he had no foundation to kind of fall on. Yeah. And so I think for me, um, that's helped me kind of get through if there's you know challenges and, and so on. And then, but also I've learned, because sometimes, at least for myself, I feel like I have to do everything on my own. I was like, you know what? There's plenty of people around me. With if it's Ashley, my family, um, people that I'm close to, I work with, where I can lean on others that have had experience in different areas. Where you right. can be just be humble and say, "Hey, I've never done this before. Yeah. Can you help me go this way?" Because then that way you still do it, but you're not just doing it on your own. Um, where you can you'll make mistakes, and you can still make mistakes utilizing others, but at least you can maybe navigate the waters better by trusting mentors or other people that are around you. For sure. You know, it's, it's probably one of the biggest impact on my life, which is insane, because I used to work at a church, and I used to preach to people, get in small groups, <laughs> hang out with good people. And I was a teacher for 10 years. I used to tell people, you're only as good as the people you hang around, right? But I never put it to practice uh-huh. myself. And there was a time with my daughter with special needs uh, that we kind of dis- – we, we were going to church, but we got disconnected from socially being involved at the church. And it seems like during those four, five, six years, my wife and I, it we became hermits, you know, and like we decided, okay, we don't need people. We're going to kind of stay in our own little bubble. And then w- when we met Ashley, uh, in, in the sense of she invited us to Hope Fellowship, and then we got involved. And she's like, we need to do a small group. And it took like two years <laughs> that, and y'all were all leaning on me to do it. No, there was COVID in there yeah. too, so I didn't really know. There was know COVID. We had a little thing with our puppy. Uh, our puppy had passed and some things like that. And But for us, is all of a sudden, we were scared to get people in our home because we may be ashamed of like, we're like, we need to update our decor. We need to update our paint. We need to update every excuse. But the point, the power of people is we might not necessarily be best friends, like hang out every day. Um, and I was actually telling this to a staff member the other day is, you know, there, it's very important to have an inner circle and yeah, you might, people might have an inner circle, uh, professionally, they might have an inner circle socially, you know, people you want to go drink and have fun, mm-hmm. hang out with, drink some bourbon, Yeah. <laughs> but it's very important that you have a group of people that you know are there only for one reason. It's almost a spiritual sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like helps help build each other up. Um, and we have some people in our small group that I know it's like now, like we might not hang out every day, we might not text every day, but I don't. No one in that group is using me for tumbleweed textiles. Yep. No one in that group is using you for t-shirts. your design and your t-shirts <laughs> and your awesome bourbon collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. But we're there. We could text each other at any moment. Hey, can we have prayer? Can we have support? And I say all that because I think it's very important that in, anyone professionally, spiritually, in their families, it's so critical to find people you can lean on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm going down a path that I did not intend to go on. <laughs> yeah, that's, but it, that's good. But it kind of goes off what you're saying is it's so critical to have uh, people to have your back, to encourage you, motivate you, and build you up. So as an artist, you know, artist, I'm, I'm married to one. I somehow all throughout high school, I tend to date artists kind of people. So I, I'm also attracted to the creatives. <laughs> yeah. um, and I do know artists tend to... Uh, doubt themselves and mm-hmm. maybe be insecure on certain ways in the sense of like, okay, this isn't good enough when it is good enough. I mean, even with Jeb, I just remember encouraging him and talking him into launching his art. That's how Tumbleweed Textiles even exists today. For you, how do you overcome some of those obstacles of fear, insecurity? Mm-hmm. Do you have someone you can lean on to help speak into you 
Like what, what does that look like as an artist, not at, at your company, but as you as an artist, true artist at home with your creative things that you do? Yeah, I would say definitely Ashley, because um, she's not an artist, but she has a totally different perspective and she'll tell the truth. Sometimes it hurts, it makes mm-hmm. me cry. But I need to hear it. Yeah. Um, then I have other friends. I have my friend I work I worked with for ten years, uh, Gabe. He's actually my boss too. But he's he's an artist too, and we just been through life together as well. So I w- I'll lean on him too when I hey I'm struggling with this, whatever it may be. And then I'll lean on my brothers uh, just because we were even though they're all Pennsylvania still, I still will lean on them for things too. Like hey, I'm struggling with this, and so it's key you had to have those relationships, but. I think you might have said this word too, but like authenticity is is key. And I remember yeah. even with the life group, where it's like that was my main thing is like all I care about is everybody's authentic. I don't, you know, and then the kind of the fake stuff where it's just like everyone's real, and this you know to trust each other because some I didn't know as well. I mean, we all know each other really well now, which is awesome. Um, but I think through on my, on the design side is just like I said, key people that I can lean on to because of their background or like say with Ashley, she knows me in and out very well because she's my wife um and so sometimes i may disagree with she, what she yeah. thinks or like but she's always my hype man too to say no you can do this i've seen you do this and so it, it's tough because i think we've learned more and more over the years just the mental health and how important that is especially with pro athletes i can't imagine with them like how much pressure they put on themselves yeah. and i'm you know i'm designing with i don't have this big audience they had this massive audience the entire world's watching them especially in the olympics and stuff like that so it's we're seeing now, at least for myself, my perspective has changed when it comes to mental health, where it's like, hey, that's important. You got to take care of that or just be aware of signs where like, maybe I'm a little depressed or maybe I'm down. And for me too, on the creative side, I a lot of times will take a break from like looking at something where you can go online and or follow other designers, which is great. But walking out in nature, music's a huge thing for me. And I love pulling creativity from anything. I could be in the room you're at. I'm at the zoo. Oh, that's really cool how they did this thing. Yeah. I can apply this to whatever I'm working on a website. You know, it's just that's where I find the fun. And that thing can make things unique because you're not doing what everyone else is. You're just kind of taking a break. So sometimes it's easy or it helps just to walk away from things and take a break too. So, yeah. But yeah. Preach it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> um, now, I mentioned bourbon. Yes. It seems like almost every artist, at least male artists I know, are collectors of something. Yes. And for Jeb, it's everyone knows his junky trinkets. He like he the loves cell phones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he he had he found some flip phones from like over the years, yeah. kids that basically gave gave them away for art projects. Yeah. And he was cleaning out his uh, a bin, and he found like a whole box of them. And I was telling him, like, those are worth money now. Like, you should do something yeah. with them. <laughs> but he's a collector, so he's going to hoard them probably. Yeah, yeah. But he's he, uh, he loves estate sales and all that and uh, collecting junk and reselling them. But yeah. for you, I'm assuming it's bourbon. But are, is there anything that you do collect or something that, like, you're competitive? So, like, something that you kind of like bourbon, you, you focus on to, you know, uh you know, you're, you're finding, trying to find the best bottles uh-huh. and things. But anyways, is there anything like that, that you collect or that you're really passionate about uh, as a hobby, I guess? Well, it's funny, yeah, because, like, especially for kids, I liked collecting bourbon. And it's like, oh, you know, my goal was to to have it and then share it with buddies and friends and just try different things and stuff. But then the craze went nuts where you can't find, you know, good bourbon or it's super expensive. So I still have my collection and stuff, but also, like, oh, I have kids. I should probably save it for their college. Yeah. Uh, other things, it's funny because like I will hyper focus on some things, and Ashley gets mad because <laughs> I get something. I'll just so focus on this. Meanwhile, say, hey, we need to do the dishes or we need to do other stuff. But um, I know for like we Ashley and I like to work out a lot, and so we have a gym in our garage, and so I'm always trying to tweak things in there. Hey, how can I? you know, work out different things. So then I, you know, I don't really read much, but I got a book on reading and tracking macros and all this kind of stuff. So I don't know if it's collecting, but I will maybe focus on different things or like talking about bourbon, like an old fashioned, like, Oh, how can I perfect this thing? And so I would make my own ice and cut it with like a knife. So it's clear. <laughs> and I would use and make my own simple syrup and all, but I love dabbling. In, and I think that's why like I made a lamp out of like plumbing pipe, uh, where you can turn like a nozzle for a hose and it turns the light on. I never messed with carpentry, plumbing, or electricity. I blew out a couple of fuses trying to figure yeah. this thing out. But at the end of the day, it worked, and I built it probably eight years ago, and awesome. it's still working. Hopefully, it didn't you know, light anything on fire. So 
I'll do, I don't know if it's more in the collecting side. It's just I'll find something I'm passionate about and then I try to perfect it and just right. super focus on it. And even now, too, like I'm planning, I'm like a green thumb person. I'm now, you know, in my 60s, you know, planting a bunch of things in the backyard. I'm flowers and bushes and mulching. And, and so it's just, I kind of jump around and that's why I think it drives Ashley crazy because I'm hyper focused here and then I get bored and then I'll jump over here. Right. Well, I think that's that's pretty common with artists. Yeah. Because I know with Hillary, I can say like uh, she doesn't compartmentalize, and she you know like she needs a she micro tasks on one thing. She she's uh, doesn't love working on multiple things. Whereas like I love working on 10, 15 things at once. Uh, but that's probably why I'm going crazy, you know, and why I have no hair <laughs> and all my gray hair. Well, I do that, too. And that's what I'll, I'll tell a lot of people, especially like young professionals or like before they get into or early in their profession um, is to be a server at a restaurant because it's all it is is multitasking. And then you learn to communicate with people. And because I remember I would get nervous. You know, I'm pretty, I guess, outgoing. But I, I used to hate presenting stuff, and I would be nervous in front of a two-top. I would walk to a restaurant, I would be so nervous to go in there to talk to people. Yeah. But I kind of forced myself, and I think that's what I learned in consulting, too, and just in life. Like sometimes you got to jump in. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes, but the only way you're going to learn is sometimes you have to get that experience. And so as a server, I learned to jump in, and by the end of my career in serving, you know, I was the— uh, the shift manager. I had two to- or two six tops at Christmas downstairs. I had to go down a spiral staircase, like all this kind of crazy stuff, um, and you know, it's super stressful. But I learned so much that I can still apply to today. So thinking of multitasking, I always tell people get be a server, just oh, yeah. at least for a little bit. <laughs> I think that's great, especially if you ever want to own a business. It, oh. like, it's really good. Uh, the amount of problem sol- social problems that you have to deal with, like. Oh, I got a hair in my thing. I, you just got to figure out how to solve things, right? <laughs> yep. And the customer's always right no matter what, right? Yep. Um, well, I was going to end on this, but you just gave a tip. Yep. But I want to ask you this question, and there might be a few other things. So as uh, obviously a very successful creative um, that you obviously are an expert within user experience, uh, but also your personal endeavors, right? I mean, being a quarterback from a football team <laughs> yeah. to uh, backyard uh, gardener. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, whatever you say. But uh, are there any tips that you have for other creatives that uh, you wish you would have known if you were getting started? Or now there might be people out there listening that are in other industries that, like you said, user experience can maybe you've learned it in your industry, but it can be applied into another industry. Any tips that you might have or things that you've learned along the way? Yeah, I think the one thing I've already mentioned was definitely follow your gut. You're going to get pushed back on things if it's from family, professionals, whatever, even you're in your mentally, like, I don't know if I should do this. But I think always follow your gut and pray on it. Because um, even now, like for me, I'm still trying to think through, okay, what do I want to do the rest of my career? Right. And so there's times where, I, you'll, yeah, you get talking about multitasking, having a bunch of stuff in your head, like you get caught up in that stuff. So there's times where like, you know what, you got to take a step away and really focus on what you want to do and, and follow that. Doesn't mean you have to do it the rest of your life, but like at least if you f- do that, and then you took a wrong turn or made a mistake, at least, again, you can fall back on that. So that's the one main thing I've learned in my career where I'm glad I've done that for the majority is kind of follow my gut and just kind of ask God, hey, what do I need to do? What I don't do a great job of it, but I'm always pushing to do yeah. a better job of it. Um, the other thing I would say is, I mentioned this too, is you know, find people that are smarter than you. Luckily for me, there's a lot of people that are a lot smarter than <laughs> me all the time. And so, but I always will lean on them to understand Okay, why? How do they get here? Why are they asking these great questions? Like, I, I, sh- I want to be asking these type of questions too, and just thinking outside the box. I'm always, especially early on, where I didn't have really any experience. Like, how do I excel in my career? So always, you know, working, you know, with other people um, and finding the the smartest guy in the room. Um, sometimes I, they might be a jerk, so maybe don't you know, talk to that person. Yeah. If they, you know, but for, you know, authentic people. And that are smart and that are, you know, willing to help. Because there's people I can still, I talk to today, I worked with back 15 years ago in North Carolina that I, I lean on and, and aspire to to be like. I love it. Um, trying to think. There's some other ones I had. But, yeah, th- this is a, probably the, the main. Oh, another thing, too, this is more specific, but, like, when designing, I've seen a lot of designers would get so focused on stuff. Like, yeah. like I said, take a step back. Walk 
do take a hike or go jump on a whiteboard. Like I love how a whiteboard is so important. I wish I would have used that more as a younger designer because I would get so nervous. Like, hey, you have to create something. And creativity doesn't come like this. Like it, it takes time. It could be super quick. It could take a day to get there to come up with a creative solution. So for me, rather than jumping in Figma or on a canvas, like sometimes like, okay, what I, what's my strategy? I would kind of whiteboard it. It doesn't have to be a sketch. It could just be, you know, words or whatever. So that's the thing too is like, before you jump in, have a plan, and then it'll help you in the long run too um, as you go through rather than you jump in, you got to jump back out, jump in. And so that's always helped me as well. Love it. That's good. I love the advice. I need it right. myself. <laughs> and it, hopefully I'm not the jerk that you're around. Uh, uh, it depends on the day. Yeah. It's okay. That's right. <laughs> no, My wife not. tells me that every day. Um, <laughs> all right, I want to end on two totally random things Oh, cool. that have nothing to do with the conversations we've had. Okay. One... I just drew a blank. No, <laughs> no. Um, if, if if you had the opportunity to uh, choose one movie, one TV show, or one song that you would be able to listen, that, like, that would be the one thing you have to listen to or watch for the rest of your life. Everything else is gone. What would that be? Dang it. Now I can pick one of one one thing. Period. But I made it easy. You could choose TV, movie, or or music. Okay. I think I know. So I think I'll pick movie, and it'll be Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Um, just great movie. Because I think uh, song, they're short. I'll get tired of that after a while. Yeah. There is a TV show we just watched. It's good, but it was depressing, too. It's like, oh, I don't want to keep watching it. Yeah. Depressing. Shawshank, there's some you know, sad parts. But overall, the end story is pretty, you know, it's just an it's overall a great, movie, yeah. Yeah, a great movie. So I'm going to do that. Now, Inspiration. As an artist, as a dad, your kids are awesome. Um, as the husband of Ashley Miller, that's a handful. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I promise. Uh, what what inspires you, right? Like motivates you and, and not as an artist, like not art, mm -hmm. but like in life, what drives you? Like if you had to like really pinpoint the thing that really gets you going what might that be? And that could be career, family, personal life, hobbies, yeah. any aspect of your life. Yeah. No, that's a good question. Because there's a bunch of things that I try to pull. Cause I try to pull in inspiration from everything. Like I said, music, if it's going on walks, getting away from stuff. But I think when it comes down to it, to the core of me, it's family. It's I want to be a great husband to Ashley. And then really it kicked in the hyper drive. Cause I always wanted to, cause like Ashley does great things, especially in yeah. the community. And so like, man, I need to be like her. I don't do these things, but I do it on the creative side or whatever. There's, you know, things intertwined there. Um, but then when we ha had Finley, my daughter, who's five now, and then Oakley, who's three, which was a whole other story. Cause we had him during COVID. But when I see them, I was like, how, what is my legacy going to be? I want to inspire them. I want yeah. to, and that and it comes back to being authentic because that's the thing, you know, kids can see through you. They will oh, yeah. call you out on it. And so for me, I'm always trying to think through, I love what I do. Am I happy with, you know, I'm going to continue to be happy with what I'm doing. Are they going to look at the stuff that I'm doing and be proud of it? Um, but not only on this career side, just like I want to be involved with them too. And I try to, that's the good thing with, COVID and being, you know, home more or remote. Um, it's changing now. It's more hybrid. But I do have more opportunities to be around them. And I try to take that in. So I think that's always inspires me. I think, too, I put more stress on myself, too, when my kids were born. I was yeah. like, oh, man, I, I got to, you know, provide. Uh, I need to also, I want them to look up to me. I don't want them to despise me, which I know will come in the teenage years yeah. anyways. But, uh, but yeah, I think that the, the core of me is just I want to do right by my family I want them to be proud of me. I also want to leave a legacy, which I'm still trying to figure out what that is. You know, I want to have something I can leave back that, that they can take with. I don't know if it's some physical thing, you know, whatever it is, but that's money, my money, goal. Money. You know, money, yeah, money. Yeah, they would, yeah, I want that. Yeah. But so, but at the end of the day, it's, yeah, trying to be an inspiration yeah. to them. So I guess their inspiration inspires my, yeah. <laughs> inspires me. Well, I will, I will say this. Authenticity is a very important to me as well uh, because – the more we do tumbleweed and as a teacher, right? Like you work with a bunch of knucklehead kids, uh, you realize how few people are truly authentic and real. Um, and for whatever reason, there's always a reason why, but whatever it is, it's hard to rely on people. And you're one of those people out of all the men that I know, 
Uh, you're probably one of the most authentic guys that I know, period. Um, as a friend, you, I know, like, Hiller and I were talking about this, like, you're probably the one of the guys outside of a handful of people that are best friends growing up and things that I know without a doubt, even if we're not hanging out every day, yeah. if the moment I called you, if I need you, you'd be there. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, as a family man, I, I never see you as like this like, like crazy obsessed worker for your career. It's, anytime I see you, it's about your family. Maybe bourbon a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Your backyard, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Maybe cooking pork or whatever yeah, it might yeah. be. But uh, it's always about family. And I've never seen anyone that it seems like having the success in your career that you're having. But it seems like you always put your family first. Um, and I know Ashley does a lot of stuff in the community. She's very busy. She's very active in all the things that she does. Um, it's amazing that she can rely on you because you're always there supporting your family mm-hmm. uh, when she's able to do what she does. And uh, that's you having to set your manly pride aside to do that. Yeah. And I respect that because I don't know. That's an area that I need to work on. Right. I, I always I tend to put my career first. Yeah. Um, and that's something seeing how y'all live has really inspired Hillary and I to want to start putting our family first. Um, it's just very critical. So kudos to you. Well, thank I, you. I, I have a utmost respect for you. That's why you're here on the podcast. Well, I like thank you. you. And, and I do want to give a shout out to Ashley because I, I pull a lot from her because she does a lot of things, but she does so much for the kids too. I mean, mm-hmm. if it was up to me, the kids would not have met, uh, mismatched clothes, hair maybe done. I don't know when the last time took a bath. You know, So she helps me <laughs> be a better dad too. So it, as you know, that, that, especially in a marriage, is all about teamwork. And it's, you know, ebb and flow of how that works depending oh, yeah. on what, you know, especially with you guys dealing with, you know, running a business and all that kind of stuff. So, but I appreciate it. I'm still trying to be better every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's part of the process. So, yep. um, man, thank you so much for joining us today. This we fun. appreciate it. Um, do you have a, a, a social handle that you want to give a shout out for? Yeah. I don't think I, yeah, I stay away from that's okay. Ashley stuff. I don't really do the social okay. stuff. Well, but. I always give it an opportunity, but, um, but we appreciate you. And, uh, if you're listening, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, please check us out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, but most importantly, if you enjoyed this podcast, share with a friend or two. Hopefully we get 20 people to listen to this podcast. We would be <laughs> stoked. So thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.